As I was thinking about what to share here today in, in the time that we have together, um, the, the message that's on my heart, that has been on my heart for years now, is one of rest. And I feel especially during the Christmas season, we have so many things going on. Uh, Craig mentioned I grew up as a missionary kid in Romania, and it was the most wonderful time of the year and also the most stressful time of the year. Um, on top of our typical, you know, decorating the tree and the house and buying the presents and then wrapping the presents and all the delicious foods and cookies and the parties, uh, we also got to minister to one of the lowest classes of society in Romania, um, the gypsy communities who were impoverished. And so we got to bundle together um, resources and gifts and food and clothing and distribute that. And we got to work with kids and have a, a nativity um, scene replayed in the church and teaching them what the angels said and what the shepherds said. And for many of them, this was their first encounter with the Christmas story. And it was all good things. It was wonderful to be used by God in that way. But as a child, I was overwhelmed. My little introverted heart just wanted Christmas to be over with so that we could go to January and just be quiet for a little bit. And I grew up understanding that Christmas is important, understanding why we celebrate it, but kind of just wanting to get away from all the hustle and bustle. And as a new mom, when I found out we were pregnant with our first, Carissa, who is now eight years old, um, I confided in an older mom in our church, and I said, Carmen, I'm just afraid I'm gonna grow up to be a Grinch mom. <laughs> and I don't want that for my children. I want to capture the beauty and the essence of Christmas and give that to them. And she was so sweet to say, you know, you can create new Christmas memories, new Christmas traditions for your family. You and your husband get to decide what Christmas looks like in your home. You don't have to accept what culture says is necessary. You don't have to find something on Pinterest with 30 activities to do in the month of December. You don't have to do Elf on the Shelf or anything else that looks trendy on Instagram. You get to decide. You get to set the tone for your family in your home during Christmas. And with that, I came to the Lord and I said, I feel like um, I have a beautiful spiritual heritage from my parents and grandparents, what has been passed down to me, but I feel like in all the hustle and bustle, I've missed the heart of Christmas. And so would you teach me what Christmas is all about? And even singing these beautiful Christmas carols earlier today, um, I was reminded that God's answer to that prayer came in the form of Christmas carols in realizing just how many different names of Jesus show up in our carols. Have you ever noticed that? There is, uh, in Hark the Herald Angels Sing alone, I think I counted seven different names of Jesus. Um, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, Son of Righteousness, the King, um, over and over again, I noticed there are different names of Jesus. And even though I had grown up in a Christian family and in a home and went to church from the womb, um, I didn't necessarily know what each of these names meant. And so that became God's invitation to me that year to unwrap a name of Jesus every day leading up to Christmas. And that is how unwrapping the names of Jesus was born. Um, 2014, so seven years ago. And what I want to share with you today is how unwrapping the names of Jesus uh, continues to be the vehicle through which he invites me, and I think today he invites us to find rest in him this Christmas season and in the year to come. I was speaking at a women's Christmas brunch this past Saturday. There were 300 women gathered in the community um, from the local church and also from their cul-de-sacs and their neighborhoods and their workplace. There was a mixture of women who had grown up in church and women who, that was one of the first times they were passing the threshold of a church. And what was the consensus was, it doesn't really matter how you grow up, 
Christmas season tends to be the busiest and the most stressful one for everyone. And I feel like if I were to have the time to sit down with each of you, um, I would hear a mixture of wonderful traditions that have been passed down to you that you love celebrating at Christmas, as well as probably some stress and some things you would be happy to do without. And so what I want to share with you today is Jesus' invitation to find rest in him this Christmas and in the year to come as we unwrap his names together. Now this rest concept comes from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, uh, where Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Is that any of us here today? Even as Craig was praying, it's not just our own burdens that we bring in this space today. It's the burdens of the members that you're talking with on the phone. I mean, I worked in a Christian call center right out of college, and it was beautiful to minister that way, but it also took a toll on my heart because you hear their stories, you hold their pain, and some of you walk out of here carrying their burdens. And I think this is Jesus' invitation to us today. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me because I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Is that something that you need today. Rest for your soul. What would it look like if this Christmas season was defined not by hustle and bustle, but by rest? Rest. In my own prayer life, rest has become an acronym that um, I pray through to remind me how exactly to find rest in Jesus, because that sounds great, but I'm a very practical person. I'm a mama to three, and so I need something that I can take with me and go as I'm washing the dishes, as I'm driving them to school, as I'm doing one thing or another. I need to know how do I rest in the midst of my activities and what I need to do each day. And so what we're Walk through in the time that remains to us. Rest is recite God's goodness. That's the R. E is express your neediness. S stands for seek his stillness. And T is trust his faithfulness. And uh, we're going to run through those quickly and then we're going to end in a time of prayer so that we might actually rest in Jesus' presence today. Uh, but to get us started, I would love to hear what are some of your favorite names of Jesus, whether it's from Unwrapping the Names, the Advent Devotional, or from carols, or names that are just dear to you of Jesus. I don't know if chapel speakers do this, but feel free to shout it out. Author of life, author and perfecter of our faith. I love that. Light of the world. Prince of Peace. Bread of life. The Bread of Life. So far, the teacher's pets are the ones that were like, I'm quick to answer, and everyone else is like, please don't look at me. <laughs> um, all <of> those names, <laughs> they're beautiful. And so this is what it looks like for me to rest in Jesus' presence um, as we unwrap his names. Those names, um, today I think, if you're following through the devotional, it's the Holy One of God is a name for today. And so what I would do is the R, rest, recite God's goodness. And so I might say, Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Your light shines in the darkness. Your light shines in the hidden parts of my heart. Jesus, you are the bread of life. You are the one who took five loaves and two fish and multiplied them to feed the thousands. 
You're the one who can take my meager financial resources, my time resources. You are the one who can multiply those things to meet my needs. You are the Lion of Judah. You are the one in whom I can find protection and refuge. I am safe with you. You are the author of life. And even if I feel lonely right now, I know that you see me, that you knit me together in my mother's womb, that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And so the R, we begin by reciting God's goodness. What is true about God? What is true about Jesus? Specifically in the names that we unwrap in this Christmas season. Because there's nothing particularly Christmassy or Adventy about Jesus' names. Those names serve us throughout the year to come. And so what you're doing right now in this season of unwrapping his names actually gives you a vocabulary of worship in the year to come. You are unwrapping his gifts, the presence of who he is, so that come January and February and March and April, when you feel like you're in the darkness, you can call out to the light of the world. When you feel like you are hopeless and in stormy waters, you can call out to the Prince of Peace. When you feel like no one sees you and no one understands the burden and the sorrow that you're carrying, you can cry out to the Man of Sorrows. The work you are doing now of unwrapping Jesus' names sets you up to find rest in his presence, both this Christmas season and in the year to come. So we recite God's goodness. The E in rest is express your neediness. Now that we've seen who God is and we've praised him for that, it is time for us to confess our need, our sins, our brokenness, the places in our lives that we are inviting him to come invade with his presence and the gift of who he is. And so what might that look like? Maybe if you're meditating on bread of life, you might say, God, if I'm honest, I'm more likely to run to the donuts than I am to a daily devotional. I'm more likely to binge on Netflix at night than I am to run to you to feed me, to feed that hungry part in my soul. God, I confess that I try to fill that hunger with everything and anything but the bread of life, and that it leaves me empty, and I am hungry for you. And you know what Jesus says to those who are hungry? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. That is his invitation to us. Maybe you feel like you are in the midst of turmoil and, and difficulty. Maybe it's a relationship. We heard Shauna's testimony. Uh, in the midst of brokenness between people, it can feel hopeless. And Jesus invites us, come to me, heavy burden, weary, whatever you're carrying, express your need and bring it to me. And in the midst of those difficult relationships, we can cry out to the Prince of Peace and say, you are the one who promises peace. And right now, peace is the last thing I feel with my in-laws. Peace is the last thing I feel with my spouse, with my children's teacher, with my neighbor. There is strife and contention here. And Lord Jesus, I need you to be the Prince of Peace because you have called us to be those then who go out and spread the gospel of peace. And I'm not able to do that until you speak your peace over my heart and life. So would you do that? So we start by reciting God's goodness, what is true about Jesus and his names. We then move to express our need. We invite God to fill us in our neediness, in our brokenness, so that we might discover that he is enough for every need. And then we move into a time, the S in rest, when we seek his stillness. Seek his stillness. I mean, you know this, prayer is supposed to be a two-way conversation between us and God, right? We open God's word, he speaks to us, and then we pray, we speak back to him, and too many times we run away right after we say amen, 
without pausing to listen? Is there anything God wants to say to me in this situation, in the midst of my need? Maybe it is just to allow his peace to fill us. I loved the song that we sang about peace, about not being afraid. And I pictured the disciples in the boat being tossed by the waves. And, and they go to Jesus and say, they, don't you care that we're dying? Which is very similar to Martha's words when she got angry with Mary for sitting at Jesus' feet. And she goes to him and says, don't you care that she's not helping me? And Jesus invites us to bring to him the don't you care questions. He can handle them. Because he doesn't rebuke the disciples in that moment. He stands up and he speaks peace over the waves. Stop, cease, be still. And as I seek God's stillness in my life, sometimes I say, Lord, would you speak your peace over my mind, over my thoughts, over my heart, over my home, over my relationships? Just like you calm the storms and the waves, would you calm the storms and the waves in my life? And then just be still with him. Let him hold you. Let him comfort you. Let him be the refuge that you run to. The psalmist says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted over the earth. That is his invitation to us, that we might rest in God's loving presence, that we might unwrap the names of Jesus, and in unwrapping the names, we might find rest in the gift of who he is. So if you're tracking with me and you haven't checked out yet, the R stands for recite God's goodness. I told you I do this back and forth. Uh, the E stands for express your neediness. There's some note takers here and everybody loves you. The S stands for seek his stillness. And if you feel like there's no way I'm going to remember this come 2 p.m., uh, we actually have a prayer bookmark that you can download with the REST prayer acronym at prayersofrest.com um, just to make it easier for you in that way. So recite, express, seek his stillness. And then we end with a T, which is trust God's faithfulness. Trust that he is who he said he is and he will do what he said he will do. If he is the light of the world and he opened the blind man's eyes, then when I ask God, would you open my eyes to understand the scripture that I'm reading? Would you open my eyes to see that person, that coworker, that neighbor that I have difficulty loving? Help me see them the way you see them. Be my light. Then we trust that God will answer that prayer. And we go into our day expectant to see him move, that he will be faithful, that he places his light in us so that we might then go and be light in the darkness. And we watch for how he will do that. If we say, Jesus, Prince of Peace, you reign in peace and your kingdom will be one of peace, of shalom, of flourishing, of making all broken things right again, of bringing beauty out of ashes. And I say, God, I need that in my life right now. Here are the relationships that are broken. Here's where I need you to work. And we seek his stillness and we say, God, speak your peace over my life. Then we trust his faithfulness. We go into those relationships, we go into those places expectant to see God be faithful, expectant to see the Prince of Peace working. Because Jesus did not just come 2,000 years ago to give us the gifts of his presence and then leave. He said, no, I am going to give you my spirit. And one of the gifts of the spirit, one of the fruit of the spirit is peace. And so we trust his faithfulness that he will work his peace in our hearts. We look for him to move in our lives through his spirit. 
And these are just three names that we walked through, <laughs> but there are 20 names in unwrapping the names of Jesus, and there are dozens of more names that are not in this book. And do you see how as we come to Jesus, as we unwrap his names, as we spend time worshiping him and adoring him for who he is, we are developing that vocabulary, that language of prayer. So that if I'm standing at the kitchen sink and the kids are arguing over who got the biggest candy cane, even though all three of them look the same, <laughs> and I feel like, God, I cannot handle this or I am gonna snap at them, I can rest. It doesn't have to be an hour-long Bible study and prayer and devotional. It can be 20 seconds at the kitchen sink saying, Lord God, you're the Prince of Peace. I need that peace in my home, like, right now. I need it in my heart before I go talk to my kids. I seek his stillness and I take a deep breath and I become aware of the Prince of Peace reigning over our home. And then I go and I talk to my children about how we are called to be ambassadors of peace to each other. Do you see how this works? Do you see how we invite, we accept Jesus' invitation to come to him throughout the day, to find rest in him, whether you're on a phone call with a member who's sharing that their loved one just died, and you take five seconds to recite God's goodness, that he is the man of sorrows, that he understands this person's sorrow, that you need his words to bring comfort in this sorrow, that you take one breath to become aware that God is with you in that moment on that phone call, and then you trust that he will be faithful and he will give you exactly what you need to say. And then you hang up and you turn to your coworker and you say, God moved on that call. I don't know how he did it, but he did it because you took time to rest in his presence. And so I invite you this Christmas season as you unwrap Jesus' names, whatever that looks like for you, whether you take a different name each day, whether you do this with your family around the table, you do this in your departments, or you just take one name to meditate on all month long. Accept Jesus' invitation when he says, come to me, come to me, all you who are weary, and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. So let's come to him now. Lord Jesus, you are the Holy One of God, and we praise you that no one else in the history of mankind has been holy. We've all fallen short, but you alone are spotless, perfect, never sinning, tempted in every way. The, the Father, every single time, you, Jesus, are holy, and we express our need that we are not. We are sinful and broken. And we make choices to walk away from you. We make choices that do not love you, do not love our neighbor. We are not holy. And as Isaiah would say, woe is me, for I am an unholy person among an unholy people. And we need, we confess our sins. And in this moment of stillness, we, we bring to you those sins that weigh heavy on our minds right now. We ask that your spirit would search us, that we might confess and receive the forgiveness and grace that you offer. And Lord Jesus, Holy One of God, we trust you to be faithful, that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness and to cleanse us with your blood, to make us white as snow. And thank you that because you are the Holy One of God, we can enter a holy God's presence without fearing his wrath. We stand perfect and complete in Jesus Christ. And when God the Father looks at us, you don't see sin, you don't see broken 
brokenness, you see the spotless lamb of God, Jesus. Thank you for such a gift. Help us to trust you to be faithful when we encounter that temptation again, that we might turn from it and run to you instead, that we might choose to live and to love you and to love one another. Thank you for your invitation to find rest in you this Christmas, and thank you that you will be faithful, that you are who you said you are, and you will do what you said you will do. And we love you, Jesus. Amen.